Automakers and governments around the globe are poised to move electric vehicles in and gas and diesel vehicles out. The electric vehicle mega trend is unfolding and insiders know the time to get in on nickel and cobalt. The two critical elements to electric car batteries, already in high demand, is now. Don't miss this chance to get in on the opportunity to invest in physical class 1 nickel and cobalt before the mass market catches on. Go to www.silverbullion.com.sg slash EV and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Hello again everyone and happy Chinese New Year. Welcome to our market update January 2019. This year, a mandated 12% of new car sales in China must be electric. Now, at first thought, we only looked at this mandate as being for private cars. However, what this also included was taxi fleets as well. In fact, we may even see the first city anywhere, anywhere in the world, to be serviced by a full fleet of taxis that are electric vehicles. But that's mag.com. Shenzhen is now almost fully serviced by e-taxis. As we recently bid adieu to 2018, Shenzhen was also saying farewell to its remaining green and red cabs as the city's goal to replace all fuel power taxis with electric powered models is nearing completion. Although the Shenzhen Transport Commission told that, that there still are some fuel powered cabs on the streets of the city, those numbers are shrinking fast. According to the commission, by the end of 2018, the city had launched 20,135 electric powered taxis or blue cabs, accounting for 94.21% of all operating cabs in Shenzhen, rising from 92.82% on December 25. The Transport Commission plans to raise that number again, with their eventual aim being to ensure that 99% or 21,485 of all operating taxis are electric powered. As such, that goal does not seem to be too far off. Taken together with the citywide launch of fully electric-powered buses in 2017, Shenzhen may soon be the first city in the world to be fully serviced by electric-powered buses and taxis. Now, this is something that just did not happen overnight. China has made the commitment to be less dependent on foreign oil and to clean up its air and improve its quality. Aside from that, the nuts and bolts of it all, meaning the infrastructure, it had to be built to accommodate China's ambition and drive to go electric. And when we look at the numbers, China is far ahead of the rest of the world by almost any metric when it comes to electric vehicles. From InsideEVs.com, new study shows which countries lead and trail in electric car adoption. The variation between countries is significant, indicates a new study by Go Compare. Highest number of electric cars with 1,227,770 cars? China has the highest electric car stock in the IEA countries, followed by the United States and then Japan. As far as charging points, it's China and the U.S. once again at the top. However, what is noticeable is that when you look at the European countries, the number of chargers they have in place dwarfs the amount of chargers in the U.S. This is telling in that Europe, much like China, is indeed setting up the infrastructure for seamless electric vehicle travel throughout Europe. China, Europe, Europe, China. Knowing how far ahead China is in the electric vehicle revolution, it makes sense that companies like Volkswagen are frantically partnering with Chinese firms. From ChannelNewsAsia.com, Volkswagen and China spearhead $300 billion global drive to electrify cars. Global automakers are planning a $300 billion surge in spending on electric vehicle technology over the next 5 to 10 years, with nearly half of the money targeted at China accelerating the industry's transition from fossil fuels and shifting power to Asian battery and electric vehicle technology suppliers. The unprecedented level of spending, much of it by Germany's Volkswagen AG, is driven in large measure by government policies adopted to cut carbon dioxide emissions and will extend technological advances that have improved battery cost range and charging time to make electric vehicles more appealing to consumers 
according to an exclusive Reuters analysis of public data released by those companies. China for decades played catch-up to German, Japanese, and American automakers which dominated internal combustion vehicle technology. Now China is positioned to lead electric vehicle development. Industry executives say that the future of Volkswagen will be decided in the Chinese market, said Herbert Dies, chief executive of VW, which has decades-old joint ventures with two of China's largest automakers, SAIC Motor and FAW Car. Speaking earlier this week to a small group of reporters in Beijing, Dies said China will become one of the automotive powerhouses in the world. Roughly 45% of the global industry's planned EV investment and procurement spending, more than $135 billion, will occur in China, which is heavily promoting the production and sale of electric vehicles through a system of government-mandated quotas, credits, and incentives. Actual spending by vehicle manufacturers on research and development, engineering, production, tooling, and procurement likely will be much higher. The analysis also does not include related spending by automotive suppliers, technology companies, and large corporations in other industries from energy and aerospace to electronics and telecommunications. There has been a rush to invest in electric vehicles and batteries says Alexandre Marianne, Alex Partners, Managing Director and Co-Author of a 2018 study that forecasts total EV spending of $255 billion through 2023 by global automakers and suppliers. Now, to further give you an example of just what some of the automakers are spending just on lithium-ion batteries, which include nickel and cobalt, Volkswagen has invested $57 billion in batteries and Daimler $30 billion. It goes to show that the EV revolution is real and transportation as we know it is going to change within our lifetime and it may very well be an opportunity of a lifetime when we take the time to understand where the world is going and what the world will need and sometimes it's the little guys in our great big world who are going to be a market force to contend with. From Channel News Asia, India's electric vehicle goals being realized on two wheels, not four. Hurt by high fuel prices, Vinod Gore, a farmer in Go village in Maharashtra, ditched his petrol scooter for an electric model underlining how two-wheelers are driving the country's goal of electrification of its vehicles. Gore's electric scooter built by Indian startup Okinawa runs for about 100 to 120 kilometers on a single charge, which costs the sugarcane farmer less than 10% of the 150 rupees he would otherwise have spent on fuel for the same distance. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set a target of electric vehicles making up 30% of new sales of cars and two-wheelers by 2030, from less than 1% today. But its efforts to convince car makers to produce electric vehicles have flopped, mainly because of no clear policy to incentivize local manufacturing and sales, lack of public charging infrastructure, and the high cost of batteries. Cost-conscious two-wheeler buyers like Gore might be a better bet. It would also open up a new market for global companies like Japan's Yamaha Motor and Suzuki Motor that are drawing up initial plans to launch electric scooters and motorcycles in the country. This potential is huge. India is the world's biggest market for scooters and motorcycles with annual domestic sales exceeding 19 million in the fiscal year ended March 31, 2018 six times that of car sales over the same period. The next biggest market is China with annual motor sales of about 17 million in 2017. India's electric revolution will be led by two wheelers. It's a value for money equation, said Sohinder Gill, global chief executive officer at Hero Electric, the country's top selling e-scooter manufacturer. And staying on two wheels, from the streetstimes.com, Indonesia is charging ahead with electric vehicle ambitions. Indonesia has decided to open up the country to investment for the manufacture of electric vehicles and at least two major car makers are said to have shown interest. 
Indonesia planned to start with electric motorcycles possibly as early as this year. The scheme would then be expanded to public buses before private cars were included. Indonesia, which is Southeast Asia's largest economy, registers annual car sales of about 1 million units, and Mr. Ayerlonga said the aim was to have electric vehicles form at least 20% of total domestic vehicle sales by 2025. He said this would translate to about 400,000 cars and 2 million motorcycles. The Indonesian government has thrown its weight behind green vehicles in an effort to reduce the country's reliance on imports of fossil fuels and turn instead to tapping its abundant nickel reserves, a key material for making lithium-ion batteries. By the middle of next year, Indonesia will have a plant that can supply the main raw materials to make lithium batteries. Tesla, the American car maker which has sold about 143,000 cars, relies predominantly on nickel in the form of nickel sulfide as the important cathode component in its car batteries. Nickel makes up 80% of Tesla's Model S car battery components, while cobalt makes up 15% and aluminum the rest. Moving forward and back on four wheels, much has been coming out about the use of solid state technology in electric vehicle batteries. Solid state technology, yes, it's on the radar and does look to possibly have a future role in electric vehicles, but it's still very, very far away from being practical, perfected, and price friendly, as Bloomberg reports. From Bloomberg.com, before the electric car takes over, someone needs to reinvent the battery. Solid state technology promises to be cheaper and charge faster than anything on the road today, but no one is close to figuring it out. To deliver an electric vehicle that's cheaper, safer, and capable of traveling 500 miles on a single charge, the auto industry needs a breakthrough in battery technology. Easier said than done. Scientists in Japan, China, and the U.S. are among those struggling to crack the code of how to significantly boost the amount of energy a battery cell can store and bring an EV's driving range into line with a full tank of gas. That quest has zeroed in on solid-state technology, an overhaul of a battery's internal architecture to use solid materials instead of flammable liquids to enable charging and discharging. The technology promises major improvements on existing lithium-ion packs which automakers say are hitting the limits of their storage capabilities and may never hold enough power for long-distance models. Currently, the best prototype with solid-state batteries is only powerful enough to propel a one-person vehicle across a Toyota Motor Core parking lot. The stakes are enormous. Adoption of electric vehicles is already expected to fuel an exponential increase in lithium-ion batteries, the reigning replacement for the internal combustion engine. In the context of comparison, the China of the European economic area, Norway, is pushing for electric vehicles to be the norm despite being an oil-rich nation. From Bloomberg.com, electric cars on course to be the new normal in Norway. Almost one-third of all new cars in Norway last year ran on batteries, reinforcing the Nordic country's reputation as the world's best market for electric vehicles. Oil-rich Norway aims to eliminate all emissions from new cars by 2025 and offers generous subsidies for buyers who opt to go electric. Other countries, including China, plan to follow suit later. In 2018, all electric cars made up 31.2% of the Norwegian market, an improvement of more than 10 percentage points from the previous year. Three of the five most popular models were electric, with a leaf from Nissan Motor Company claiming the top spot ahead of BMW AG's i3 and Tesla Inc.'s Model X. Norway, a country of 5.3 million, has long been a world leader in sales of electric vehicles. It wasn't until the first quarter of last year that it was surpassed by Germany, Europe's biggest car market. The incentives that propped up the Norwegian market include exemption 
from sales tax and road tolls. Solberg Torsen said he expects an even bigger share of battery-powered cars going forward as there is still an untapped demand for more family-friendly electric vehicles with longer range at reasonable prices. And moving from Scandinavia back over to Singapore, we continue to see how the city-state also continues to build the infrastructure for electric vehicles. From StraitsTimes.com, SP launches 38 high-speed charging points for electric vehicles. Energy provider SP Group has rolled out its first batch of electric vehicle charging points in time for ride-hailing firm Grab to plug into a fleet of electric cars. The 38 points, 19 43 kilowatt alternative current chargers and 19 50 kilowatt direct current chargers are high-speed chargers able to power up a mid-sized car within an hour compared with six to eight hours via household chargers. They are the first of 1,000 charging points SP aims to launch by 2020. Users can locate and access available charging points with the SP app, which can be downloaded from iTunes App Store and Google Play. The app includes a function which alerts users when charging is completed and facilitates payment via DBS and POSB cards. And cards from all major banks will be included soon. Payment apps, chargers, two wheels, four wheels. The electric vehicle revolution is on the move this year and those in the know, they know. Cobalt and especially nickel will be part of the driving force for EV batteries. Two of the metals leading the charge and from last month's December 2018 market update to the current January 2019 update, nickel has gone up over thousand dollars per ton and starting off the year with a bang get in on the electric vehicle revolution automakers are governments are how about you take care everyone and once again happy chinese new year excited about the opportunities in the coming electric vehicle revolution and looking to invest in this electrification super cycle demand for battery metals like nickel and cobalt is expected to rise in tandem with the increase in demand for lithium-ion batteries in electric vehicles you can now buy nickel and cobalt parcels with silver bullion and have a direct price exposure to both battery metals you have the option to buy 2-ton nickel parcels or 250-kilogram cobalt drums. Every parcel will be fully insured against loss and guaranteed to be genuine by silver bullion. Selling your parcels to lock in profits is as simple as logging into your silver bullion account, selecting the parcels, and clicking sell. Buy your nickel and cobalt parcels now at Silver Bullion's website, www.silverbullion.com.sg slash eb and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Interested but have questions? Email us at sales at silverbullion.com.sg or give us a call at plus 65 6100 3040.